In the animated short Spoon Man, there's a sequence where Spoon Man right here is fighting a couple of the Quints, and he ends up, I'm going to kind of thumb through, uh, kind of go through the, the animation, he, he ends up kicking this one Quint out the window, so she goes and breaks the window, so it breaks into a bunch of different pieces and falls down, and then she ends up landing on this Hummer and blowing out the windows, and, and it ends up uh, taking the, the each window and shattering it into a bunch of different pieces. So I thought we could take a look at how we could set that up, and also um, look at some techniques for disguising the fact that the object is already broken up into a bunch of different pieces uh, in order for the hard body dynamics to work. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and start by creating the object from scratch. We'll come over to the Create tab and choose Box. And I'm just going to create a flat plane. We'll end up making it 3D, but we'll start off by making it flat. So I'm going to flip that just so it's facing us. Okay, and I'm going to copy and paste that into Layer 2. And in Layer 2, I'm just going to split this object up. So I'm going to shift K for the knife tool and just cut all the way through in a couple places. Uh, shift K for the knife tool and we'll cut a couple more times. Okay, that should do. Now in order for um, hard effects to work, we need these to be separate pieces. And right now if I select connect, they're all connected. So I'm gonna come over to the detail tab and choose unweld. And what it does is makes it so I'm hitting select connect and it's not connecting the rest because they're, they're individual pieces. Okay. And we'll leave it like that. We'll come over to layer one and we'll multiply, extrude, in for numeric, and let's just make that one meter. So we'll give it one meter thickness. Okay, that works. And we'll come over to layer two, extrude, and we'll activate, and we'll do the same setting. So basically what we're looking at is in layer one, we've got, let's just say this is our wall or our window. That's pretty thick glass if it's a window. So we'll just say a wall. And then in layer two, we have the exact same shape, except this one's broken up into a bunch of different pieces. Okay, so let's save that out. So file, save object, and we'll call this wall 001. And let's send that over to layout. Okay, so now I've got both objects and they're right on top of each other. I'm going to switch to wireframe so we can see that we've got the wall and then we've got the wall that's broken up in, into a bunch of different pieces. Okay, so I'm going to set it up so that when uh, I'll have a collision object come in on frame, say right around frame 30, we'll have it uh, the collision object smash into this and break the wall into a bunch of different pieces. But I want to disguise the fact that it's a bunch of different pieces until the moment that it, it needs to, to actually happen. Okay, so what I'll do is grab layer one, which is the solid wall, come over to object, properties, and under render, we've got an object dissolve um, option. It's 0% because we, we don't want it to be dissolved. Okay, but we do at some point. So I'm going to click E for envelope. And I'm going to say that on frame 30, I'm going to say that I want it to be 100% dissolved. Okay? So it's not, it, it won't show up. Except I don't want it to travel. See how it's, it's linear? It's going at zero and then slowly dissolves. Well, I don't want that. What I want is on keyframe 29 for it to be zero as well. But remember, when you have three keyframes, it tries, Lightwave tries to, to smooth it out for you. So I'm going to grab these keys and I'm going to set them to linear. <clears throat> so it stays zero from, from zero to 29. And then from 29 to 30, it's going to shoot to be 100% dissolved, which means it won't show up. Okay, so let's take a look. At, once we hit, if we deselect it, let's just select, say, the light. And if we deselect it, at, at um, frame 30, it's going to disappear. Well, we want to do the exact opposite for the, um, the broken up object. So we'll take uh, layer 2, come over to object dissolve. Yeah, we want to dissolve it 100%. We don't want it until frame 30. So we'll go to E for envelope. And at keyframe 29, we want that at 100% as well. 
and then at keyframe, oh, that was at 30. So at 30, we, we want it to be zero. And then at keyframe 29, we want that to be at 100. And I'm just going to select both keys and set those to linear, just like we did before. So we're saying hide the object, and then on frame 30, show it. So now let's select the light, and we can see in this object right here, in the, in the viewport here, we can see that we've got our solid object, and then once we hit frame 30, now we have our broken up object, and the solid object is hidden. It's still there in the scene, we just can't see it. Okay, so this would, this would allow us to keep a solid object the whole time. Now, on flat surfaces like this, you might not have to do it. You might not be able to tell that it's broken up into different pieces. But if you had a cylinder or a sphere or anything with curved surfaces, you're not going to be able to have smoothing between different objects. So you're probably going to need to do the object dissolve setup. So that's why I wanted to, to show you. Okay, so now that we have this set up, I'm going to go ahead and switch to texture. And then with the light selected, let's just change our lighting enough to um, to be able to see that this is a three-dimensional object. It was looking kind of flat. I, I like the shading on there. Okay, so now all we need to do is break up the object. And to do that, we'll need a collision object. So I'm going to go ahead and add a dynamic collision object. And since we're only going to use one for this example, I'm just going to leave the name. But usually I like to name it so that I don't get confused in a bigger scene. So we'll hit OK. And let's size, let's size it up really big. So I'm just going to try three. three. Three meters seems to work pretty good. We'll keep all the other settings uh, default. OK, on, on frame 30, let's have it be there. So I'll keyframe it by hitting Enter, Enter. And then on frame 29, I'm just going to put it right outside it, okay? So it's not touching it, which means that over one frame, it's just going to hit it pretty hard, okay? And just to get it out of the way, on frame zero, let's just pull it over here, okay? So our animation will go something like, and then we'll do a boom. It's kind of like a Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee punch. It just happens over a short distance, boom. And we're going to have that send the wall uh, flying into a bunch of different pieces, okay? So what I'm going to do is select object 2 that remember that's our that's uh, the layer 2 that has the different pieces P for properties dynamics tab add dynamic hard effects now without changing any of the settings let's go ahead and calculate to see what happens boom okay so by default it's just gonna hit all those objects and send them flying now what would make it look a little more realistic is if we turn if we added some gravity so let's go ahead and do that so for gravity, let's do negative 9.8, okay? And we'll calculate. Ah, oh, we got a problem. What happens is, is that it just starts falling right away, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so that they're, they're already falling. You just can't tell. Like, let me go ahead and... Um, the, with the object dissolve, you can't tell that the, that the objects have been falling all along because, remember, we had it dissolved. So what I'm going to do is make it so that I don't want it to, to start being affected by gravity or any type of dynamics until it gets hit by the collision object. So all we have to do is come over to collision, okay, and see where it says start by collision? Let's start by collision, okay? But because I changed that setting, I need to recalculate, okay? So what happens is, is that they sit in place, gravity's not affecting them at all, and when the collision hits, that's when gra the gravity starts affecting it, okay, which is what you would want. You don't want a, a dynamic object to just start falling. Well, in most cases, you don't want them to just start falling. It's supposed to be a wall or a window pane that doesn't get affected until, um, you know, until it gets hit by something. So there you go. This is showing um, how easy it is to work with hard body dynamics in Lightwave, but, but what I really wanted to show is not only how to set up the hard body dynamics, but to set it up so that you can't tell that the object is separate pieces. Again, with flat surfaces, you don't have a, a, a problem. It's when you have smoothing on a surface, and the minute you cut that up, you're going to get smoothing errors. You're not going to be able to smooth between the two different, um, you know, two different pieces. So. Uh, you'll want to do the object dissolve setup in order to, to get a, a nice finished look.